Hello guys, I wanted to do a video real quick on hypostasis. Um, I have did in one of my videos, I explained the marking system. So I actually have my books closed just to show you the value of using markers. See, like right there, that's hypostasis. So I can just open straight to it now. I don't have to fumble through here to find it for you guys. So right here is the word hypostasis. And right here, you can see that it's mentioned five times in the Bible. One, it's one, two, three, four, five in those five places. And um, so what this will actually do is this will help you locate exactly where a particular... Sorry, my phone is dying. <laughs> a particular place is located. So, or a word, a Greek word is located in the scriptures that you're studying. So... Um, <laughs> It, it says, for example, it's mentioned five times, this particular Greek word, hypostasis, and it's mentioned in 2 Corinthians 9, 4, 11, um, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 17, Hebrews, verse, um, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14, and Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And that's the one I'm going to be discussing with you. That's where um, you might have heard it before. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen. So, <clears throat> for the definition of that word hypostasis, which is actually the word substance in that, I'm going to go over here to my Kittle Theological Dictionary of the New Testament. The one I was just reading from that had those words listed in order is the word study concordance. It's a really cool book right there. And so, so is the Kittles, but um, the and we're actually going to the index volume because I'm going to show you how I found the word hypostasis in what in which um, volume of this particular dictionary it was located. So again, right here I have it marked. So as I said, it's closed. Um, you go to the place you marked hypostasis and you open it. So I uh, put a little arrow here. Hypostasis is right here, and remember this is the index volume of your Kittle, the um, Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, and I go to volume 8, and it even has the page number listed, page 572. So, I went and I got my volume 8 right here, and um, as you see, volume 8, that's Roman numerals, V-I-I-I -I -I means 8, and um, and then I'm going to go to page 572. But I went ahead and I put a tab next to it. So I just opened straight to, um, accidentally opened to hypocrite. Hypocrite is right before hypostasis in your um, kittle, if you have one. If not, I'm going to show you. So um, page 572, as you can see, hypostasis. So the index showed you how to get to the word hypostasis. That little mark right there. The diagritical mark makes it gives it a breathing sound, so hypostasis. Um, and I also marked the subject I'm going to read to you because I'm going to read to you from Hebrews 11:1, 1, right? Like I showed you in the word study concordance. So I go there, and it says the passages in which hypostasis is used in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, chapter 3, verse 14. Chapter 11, verse 1, are essentially more, much more difficult to assess. This is especially so in view of the fact that the word has usually been given different meanings and translations in the three, e.g., essence in chapter 1, verse 3, steadfastness in chapter 3, verse 14, and standing in chapter 11, verse 1. A more or less Fixed and developed usage is plainest in chapter 1, verse 3, and then it gives you the Greek phrase. It says here, hypostasis is parallel to doxa. Both words are obviously describing God's essence, and it tells you another place to go in your kittles. It is thus inadvisable to render hypostasis specifically by essence. The translation should rather express the degree to which doxa and hypostasis denote two special qualities in God's nature that are both present in the Son as their apugasma. 
and Kara character or character yeah character that's a it's a actually in the Greek character is exactly like the English if you can I know that looks Greek to y'all but it's actually the same exact spelling as the English it's just with Greek characters so um the fact that these are developed theological terms and not just incidental metaphors is shown especially by the parallels in Philo. Above all, for character tes hypostasios, and then in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, as in Philo, hypostasis denotes the actuality of the transcendent reality. So that's awesome. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, it says, hypostasis denotes the actuality of the transcendent reality, that is God. While in distinction from this, doxa expresses his mighty glory as the impress character of this being, hypostasis, which alone is real in contrast to all earthly phenomena. Christ is the holy valid revelation of this transcendent reality of God. Then, hypostasis as invisible transcendent reality is a term in the vocabulary of dualism. It is best to interpret the best known of the New Testament hypostasis passages primarily in this light, namely the much quoted definition of faith in Hebrews 11.1, 1, estende pistis el pizomenon hypostasis pragmaton elegkos al blepomenon in translation of hypostasis here and in Hebrews 3:14 Melanchthon advised Luther sorry Luther to use the rendering sure confidence whereas all patristic and medieval exegesis presupposed that hypostasis was to be translated substantia and understood in the sense of osia Luther's translation in, introduced a wholly new element into the understanding of Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is now viewed as personal, subjective conviction. This interpretation has governed Protestant exposition of the passage almost completely, and it has strongly influenced Roman Catholic exegesis. It has also had a broader effect, yet there can be no question but that this classical Protestant understanding is untenable. The starting point of exposition must be that hypostasis in Hebrews 11.1 1 has to have not only a meaning like that in Greek usage elsewhere, but also a sense similar to that it bears in the other Hebrew references. It should also be noted that hypostasis here is parallel to elekkos and that it occurs in a sentence full of central theological concepts. Now as regards Elekos, it is evident that this does not mean subjective non-doubting, nor does it have anything at all to do with conviction. It bears the objective sense of demonstration. In the first instance, then, the elekos of pragmata al blepomina is the proof of things one cannot see, that is, the heavenly world which alone has reality, whereas in Hebrew, Hebrews, everything visible has only the character of the shadowy and frontal. If one follows the meaning of hypostasis in Hebrews 1 3, then hypostasis el pizomenon bears a similar sense. It is the reality of the goods hoped for, which have by nature a transcendent quality. Primarily, then, elegkos and hypostasis do not describe faith but define the character of the transcendent future things and do so in the same sense as Philo and other representatives of Middle Platonism speak of the reality and actuality of God and the world of ideas. In a formulation of incomparable boldness Hebrews 11.1 1 identifies pistis with the transcendent reality Faith is the reality of what is hoped for, in exactly the sense in which Jesus is called the character of the reality of the transcendent God in 1.3. The one formulation is as paradoxical as the other, to the degree that the presence of the divine reality is found in the one case in the obedience of a suffering and dying man, Hebrews 5.7, and in the other in the faith of the community. But this is the point of Hebrews, only the work of this Jesus and only participation in this work 
are not subject to the corruptibility of the merely shadowy and prototypical. In the light, in this light, the meaning of the third and last hypostasis reference in Hebrews is evident without further ado. We have become participants in Christ, and then it gives you a long Greek phrase, Hebrews 3.14. This statement is one of those central and fundamental admonitions in Hebrews which, which carry a summons to cleave to that which establishes faith. Hence, and then it shows you Hebrews 3.14 again, or part of it, is to be compared with expressions like another Greek phrase in um, Hebrews 3.1. In such sayings, there is no reference to the subjective attitude of faith, but always to its objective possession. Thus, archaetes hupostoseos is a description of the reality on which the existence of the community rests, as Christ, the apostle of the confession, is the presence of the reality of God in which believers share. The fact that there can be reference to a beginning, arche, of this paradoxically present reality of God is best elucidated by Hebrews 3 2 which says of the soteria that it had a holy real and visible beginning with the proclamation of the Lord to cling to the beginning of the reality of God is thus the same as being confident to the very end of the reality of God which has an all actuality commenced in the life of the community and and this in the way in which this divine reality is present in faith, Hebrews 11.1. 1. It is plain, then, that in Hebrew, hypostasis always denotes the reality of God, which stands contrasted with the corruptible, shadowy, and merely prototypical character of the world, but which is paradoxically present in Jesus and is the possession of the community as faith. So, I know that that's a, a mouthful, but um, I think that if you took time to understand what he's talking about, it would be very, very interesting to you. Um, I know that was a lot, and I actually read some of the Greek phrases, but I think if you just took time to listen to what he's saying in here, or even order you your own copy of this, it would um, completely blow your mind. <laughs> but... Um, um, so that has been a study on hypostasis. So anytime you hear someone say faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, I hope that you understand a little more about what that means to be um, with God in his transcendent reality as opposed to the things we see here, which are sometimes very confusing and can seem like disorder. But um, thank God that we worship a God of order and he shows himself to the few who actually believe in him so i hope that y'all enjoyed this video and thanks for watching have a good day bye